All right, so we have the Recipe. It's the XT32-M2X. So very, just the, it's the, I call it the half sister of the XT32. Has the lighter um, Recipe head on it. Both of them are outstanding units. So we are going to do SLAM. And so I'm going to walk you through, I'm going to show you the collection process. And what we're going to do is you will take this unit, man, the wind's blowing 147 miles an hour out here today. But we're going we're gonna to start the capture on this, and we're going to let it capture for about 30 seconds. The SOP calls for 10 seconds. We're going to do 30 seconds. Then you can see this pole that I have. I'm going to mount it on the pole, and this, to collect the LiDAR data in general, if you're always on a flat surface or just general terrain, you will collect the slam with it in the what I would call the vertical position, but the, the head itself is actually in the horizontal position. And then we will come back, I will set it back down, I'll let it sit for another 30 seconds, and then we will stop the capture. One of the main things you have to do if you're switching either from like the drone, there's an option to either capture data with GNSS only or turn that off so you can capture data with or without. So when you're doing SLAM, you obviously have to turn that off because we're not using GNSS data. All right, so as you can see, we have, turn it around, I just got a little small battery. So here we go, a little 35C 2200 milliamp battery is going to power this. I've got a, uh, and I'll probably turn this up so you can see it, but I've got a, uh, a Swiss mount on a, on a paint pole and that will, uh, hook to this uh, actually I'm missing the adapter I got to put that on so we'll we'll actually put the adapter on which came from Aerologic Solutions so thank you Josh for that matter of fact let me go ahead and put that on so if you need customized uh, CNC adapters for any type of DJI port or other it doesn't matter he can mill them all out so anyway, we're gonna put this on there, but I wanna do it in such a way that I don't, I'm gonna put this down for just a minute, okay? All right. Now I have my handy dandy Josh Halleck Aerologic Solutions adapter on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. So it is ready and you can see that I have my mission named, I call it SLAM2. And um, I've got the record without GNSS, that's turned on. So again, once we finish this for my aerial stuff, I have that set to off. Now we're gonna do data recording, I'm gonna hit start. It is now starting, so again, we wanna do this for about, man, I don't know, 10 seconds. I should have, should have turned the camera off. I'm gonna stop it. Oops, stop. Okay, so I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go up to my settings. I'm gonna go to camera. I'm gonna go to camera trigger. And we're gonna say 60 seconds. Let's see if it'll save that. Now we're ready to start, okay? And so now we'll only take a picture once every 60 seconds. And again, we're not colorizing this point cloud. So this will be just a point cloud only. It'll be very good data, very accurate data. So, eh, like I said, we'll just let it go for maybe 30 seconds. Again, the SOP calls for 10 seconds, but I think, well, sometimes more is better, isn't it? Not always, but sometimes. So we'll let it um, sit here, and I probably should have been very still. So you're sitting here, Generally speaking, for even like little small handheld LiDAR units, they want you to be still or to be somewhere where there's not a lot of movement. And again, we already got the trees moving, but all these other anchor points around uh, are gonna be good. So I think that's adequate. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the LiDAR unit on the head. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go all the way and I'm just gonna walk around.
We are good. So we're going to stop and I am going to set this down. Okay. And then we're going to let it sit right where it started. Easy there, baby. Boom. Okay. We are now going to let this sit, I don't know, 30 seconds. That'll be enough. And then we'll, we'll stop and shut it down. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do stop. So we did stop, and then the uh, next thing I'll do is shut down, and then we'll go back and process the data. And she's off. All right, I'll see you guys in the office. We'll process it and see how it looks. So we are now going to dive into the PC Master Pro software by Inertial Labs. And so this is the software that you will use to do your initial processing, whether you do SLAM, mobile, or aerial LiDAR. And the version that I'm going to be using is 1.7. It was just re released today. So the newest version and got some a uh, few little updates in there. So anyway, we're using the latest and greatest and we are in uh, May, well it's May 7th, what no, April 17th, 2024. So I'm going to click on OK. So when you're going to do... Um, SLAM. First off, you have to have a SLAM license. Here I have my license already entered in and activated and it can't be activated on more than one computer so once it's been activated then you can't go activate it again on a separate computer but you do have to have a SLAM license so just know that. And we're gonna go we go to SLAM processing I'm gonna go to settings and it will by default be disabled. So when you're going to do a slam job, you will come in. And this is this was outdoor pedestrian, so we were walking outdoors. So I'm going to just set it to that. And you can change these values here. So your maximum scan point distance. I mean, this is in meters. If um, man, if we wanted to change it to 50 meters, we could. I'm not. I'm going to go back up to 75 just so y'all can see everything at scan. So we're going to close this. I'm going to go to File, uh, Open Project, right here. And then it's going to be in this folder. And we're just going to open up this ppk.pcmp. And honestly, this is the easiest part about the slam. I mean, going out and walking around, that's the, the hardest part of it. Coming in and processing the data, this is actually quite simple. And it will go pretty quickly and then in some future videos I'm going to do uh, a video and we'll take SLAM and aerial LiDAR and merge those together so maybe you have an outdoor an aerial flight but then you have maybe a canopy or a uh, like today I was at the ball field at a concession stand it was a covered area all of it was covered and so if you wanted to take that and merge it with the aerial LiDAR, then you can take your, your SLAM scans and do that. So I will do a separate video and show you how to merge that. A lot of, lot of good stuff. So we're going to fast forward through this part of it. All right, and that's it. So after, let's go ahead and maximize this. After about what four minutes or so the uh, point cloud has been generated now I tell you this this is upside down and it's upside down because when I and let's uh, I'm gonna right mouse click and say color by intensity now you can see there's the there's the part so anyway the reason it was upside down I did not set the um, IMU uh, to zero 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 as far as the y'all pitch and roll when I was in the field so shame on me I missed uh, changing that it's not a big deal it's just that it came in and it was flipped upside down 180 degrees because I have it set to 180 uh, for when it's mounted on the drone so anyway well I hope this has been helpful you can take this data you come up here and we can go export and there is no color we're going to export a, uh, we can either do uh, LAS or the zip format of that and export it out. 
there's no color because this is mobile now at some point there will be some integration with 360 cameras and be able to colorize the uh, slam data as well as the mobile so that is forthcoming in the in the months to come but for now this right here is a very very good point cloud that you then could even come in and do uh, maybe need to do some as-built stuff and one of the other videos we'll be doing in the near future is to take this and I've got a, uh, a laser scanner, terrestrial laser scanner, and so we're going to do we're going to do a test. We'll just even maybe come and do this this building and this one. We'll come back and laser scan this area so that we can then do the CAD drawings. I'll actually get a third party to draw up those plans, and we're going to see just how close they are. And it's going to be, I imagine, it's going to be pretty pretty darn good. Now, obviously, I mean, the laser scanner will definitely come in tighter because, I mean, those are into the millimeters for, for accuracy. But uh, all in all, it should be a very good point cloud drawing from this. And I've, I made reference to this in the video, but if you're doing a job where the roof is vital, where you, it's very important to get the roof, maybe you're in an area where you can't fly, there could be a number of reasons, then... I could have been very intentional to one get back further and two get the LiDAR unit up in the air nice and high so that we could capture these roof points uh, right over here so these you can see this one we got all of those and actually this is yeah so this some of these points we didn't get but we could have backed up and I could have raised the LiDAR unit up nice and high to get those roof points. Now we would have roof, inside, outside, everything, a complete scan just from doing uh, a pedestrian walk around uh, slam capture. Well, I hope it's helpful. If there's videos you wanna see, if you have questions on this, ask it, pick up the phone, call me. All right, so here we are. Again, I'm in LiDAR 360. But again, this right here just really gives you a better view of the of the point cloud and lets you see. Everything that was captured. And you know, man, when you start getting into point clouds and you kind of have to have point cloud glasses to see everything. Right, if we change the view, I mean, intensity view is going to be the best thing you can view it. But a lot of data collected by just simply walking around, a lot of data. And we could have done more on the roofs if that was urgent and needed to be be captured. But I just uh, I wanted to show you this. This was going to give you a lot better idea of everything that was captured. I mean, it started capturing the stuff out here. Um, you can walk along, you can do power line inspections, any place that you can't ride or fly. You can jump on a four-wheeler, get on Mike and Ike, wherever, and get your power line inspections. Just a lot of different reasons you might would need to do um, do slam. I'm going to go in and do do an as-built of this and I look forward to seeing how it's going to compare to the Leica P16 terrestrial scanner and just compare the data between those two. Alright, well that's it. I hope this is uh, educational. Again, let me know what you want to see and I'll make some more videos.